This is an overview of the inspection criteria for type 2 and type 3 SRLs. Hello, my name is Brad Reed. I'm an employee at Levitt Safety in the Fire and Life Safety Division. Today we're just going to discuss a few of the criteria and inspection requirements for type 2 and type 3 SRLs. We refer to the CSA standard for these devices, which states that any new unit from the date of manufacturer requires service from an authorized service center within the first two years of manufacture and annually thereafter. I'm just going to briefly go over some of the requirements for self-retracting lifelines. Uh, there's two types we're going to talk about here today. The first is the type 2 self-retracting lifeline, which is any retractable unit that's over uh, three meters in length. The second unit we're going to talk about is a type 3 SRL, which is the same criteria as a type 2 SRL. Uh, the exception, this one having an emergency retrieval, uh, commonly misused. This device is solely for emergency retrieval, not for continual use, day-to-day -day use. In the event of an emergency, you can activate the retrieval and extract uh, a victim from, from a confined space or from a fall. Any unit that comes into our shop, uh, first thing we'll do uh, is, is an overall inspection of the, of the housing of the unit, the exterior of the housing. We then mount it up on a hook and we deploy the, the cable. The first thing we're checking for is the tension on the cable. Uh, this unit should retract on its own all the way. Uh, we then deploy the cable all the way, uh, however many feet it may be, 50, 100, 150 feet. We deploy the whole cable and inspect it from top to bottom looking for any signs of wear, nicks, kinks, rust, anything that may prevent it from operating properly or, uh, or fail in the event of a fall. We then check the snap hook, which is the device that connects directly to the end user's harness. All the snap hooks are designed with a load indicator. In the event of a fall, uh, if this device sees over 900 uh, foot-pounds, uh, it will deploy uh, the load indicator and you'll see a red line indicating that this has seen a fall. At that time, you would then also have to, according to the CSA standards, remove this device uh, from service for inspection. Uh, to an authorized service center. Once we've done our, our inspection of the unit and the, and the cable function, then we bring it over to the bench and we disassemble the unit. Uh, we check for any major signs of wear. You can see that this one uh, has seen quite a bit of damage and obviously hasn't been cleaned out in some time. This has probably been out in service longer than a year. Uh, on the main housing of the unit, the, the both sides we check uh, for any major damage, any cracks in the housing and to ensure anything that needs to be replaced or re require reconditioning would be done. The second main component of the unit is the brake hub and brake assembly. Uh, inside this unit there is a power spring which is what provides all the tension on the cable and allows it to retract back inside of the unit. Uh, this, this device also has uh, what we call brake paws or which, which are what engage into the brake assembly on the housing. Uh, this unit is severely rusted uh, you can see the reason for requiring these inspections. It should move freely. The other brake pole on this side is completely seized in place. In the event of a fall, this would not prevent the end user from, from falling. Uh, it would not lock up and, and would fail, resulting in a catastrophic uh, results for, uh, for the end user. The next major component is the cable itself. Uh, this is a galvanized cable. You can also get them in stainless steel and rope as well. Uh, all units follow the same inspection criteria for cable. Uh, this one being galvanized, it's, it can see some moisture, but extensive exposure uh, to, to moisture can cause severe rusting. Uh, and you can see on this unit, uh, there's, there's quite a bit of rust buildup, which could create some weak spots. And in the event of a fall, uh, with enough force generated, it could potentially break the cable. We'd also check for any major kinks or any nicks, cuts in the cable and would replace if required. Once we've done our full inspection and deemed any parts to be unsuitable, we then replace them and reassemble the unit uh, from start to finish back to uh, what it should, should have looked like coming right from the manufacturer. These units are completely rebuildable. Any part can be replaced uh, in-house by our service center. and. Um, that's pretty much the inspection of an, an SRL. 
Um, the retrieval component uh, follows the same criteria as, as, as the, uh, the SRL portion. We would remove this from the SRL, uh, perform a, a test on it, uh, making sure nothing's been seized up um, or, or everything's functioning as it should be. Anything that's, that's, that's not suitable would be replaced and, uh, and we do a final load test on, on the retrieval portion. Uh, ensuring it's working properly before we put it back into service. Um, so just to recap, all uh, self-retracting lifeline units, type 2 and type 3, require uh, an, annual, an annual overhaul by an authorized service center. And uh, thank you for listening.